They say the first impression you make on people is the biggest one you'll ever make. So with that being said, I got a cartel story for you guys. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Wrong the Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, subanse a la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. What's up? This video is dedicated to Bella Bella. What's up, Bella? I got a story today. It's a cartel story. <laughs> I got stories. <laughs> so, it's back in the day, you know, I flew into Guadalajara to pretty much make sure that some money got there. And while we were there, the people that I was working with, we had to drive down to Ciudad Guzman. That's literally, you know, just down from Guadalajara. Well, when I got there, I met the boss. I'm gonna leave the names out. <laughs> He's still around. <laughs> but I met the boss and he wanted me to go to Apasingan and pick up some money and bring it back to Ciudad Guzman. So I said, cool, you know, I mean, that's how, you know, you earn points with these, with these guys. And, and, and you know, he didn't want his, his, he was sending his son with me because he didn't want his son to be alone. He didn't, you know, so we went ready. You know, we, we actually had a big assault rifle in the car. We had some hand pistols and we were, we were ready. We get to a passing gun, you know, we pick up the money. It was two pretty big bags, I'd say a little bit, probably like a quarter mil. It was, it was a lot of money. And we start driving, you know, there's, there's a, a, a highway, they call it Autopista in Mexico, that's the Guadalajara, Ciudad uh, Mexico Autopista. It's a paid freeway where you pay and pretty much you get on there and you just, hit the fucking gas and just go fucking fast. You know, and it's right, you, you get off right in Zamora and you know, you go into, you know, Apasingan, all that, Los Reyes, all that in there, you know, and that's what we took to get there. Once we got all the money in the, in the car and everything, they told us, don't stop. If you see a military checkpoint, don't stop. <sighs> yeah. So, we're actually in a pretty good souped up car and we start driving, you know, we, the hardest part out of driving in those parts is actually getting out of the hot territory, you know, getting out of Apasingan, you know, what route you're gonna take, if you're gonna take through Rapan, or you're gonna take through Los Reyes, and you know, uh, what way you're gonna get around. So we went the other way around, we got through to Zamora, and we jumped on the freeway, and we started flying, you know, we were going fast. I had already been holding my piss. I was holding it, and it was starting to hurt my stomach, and I was like, shit, man, you know, and, and they, when they say don't stop, it, it means don't, don't stop. So, you know, and then, you know, to top it off, I got the boss's son with me. So I, I'm trying to like, just get shit done right, with no mishaps, nothing, just, you know, make an impression so that way I could climb up the fucking ladder, you know? So he's passed out, he's sleeping. I'm like, fuck, I need to piss. So I grab, a Sprite bottle, right? And while I'm driving, I put it on cruise control and 
I, I pull, I pull my, 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 my junk out and I put it in the bottle so I could piss into the bottle. I've always said, it's easier said than done. <laughs> that shit came out with so much pressure because I have been holding it for so fucking long that it shoot, it shot the fucking sp a Sprite bottle out of the way. And then it started going crazy all over the place. Like a fucking, like a fire hose. Just, it got on the windshield, it got on the dashboard, it got on him. <laughs> and he woke up, he was fucking pissed, he seen me. And it's like, it looked like a fucking cartoon. I couldn't even control it. It just was going all over the fucking place. I couldn't even stop it. I had been holding it for so long that I guess it was like backed up and it was just like a fucking fire hose. I mean, piss got everywhere. I even got on him. He woke up, he was like, Verga, que esta pasando? And he started going crazy and I was like, you told me not to stop. <laughs> so, yeah. The whole car, Smell like piss. It was the middle of summertime over there, so it started getting hot. We got to where we needed to get, and my, of course, my luck, because I have some of the most shittiest luck sometimes. His dad, the fucking boss, decides that he wants me now to take him back to a pasingan in the car that I just fucking pissed all over. And we had already been driving, so it had already like sunk into the car and everything. So the fucking whole car smelled like fucking piss. Yeah. There's a certain amount of respect that you keep with these people and a certain way that you need to carry yourself because I mean, let's be honest, they, they, they kill people for a lot less, you know, so I was a little nervous, I was, you know, a little scared, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so he got in the car, right, and I started driving, and I was just waiting for it, you know, and he, sure enough, he was like, he was like, why does the car smell like that, why does it smell like straight piss, and I really didn't want to tell him the story, but I said, fuck it, you know. The way that, that you guys see me, the way that I am. Yeah, I did a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I've been in a lot of different prisons and stuff like that, but I've always been, I guess you could say like a goofball. I've always kind of laughed at shit. I've always had like, I guess I'm just a little, a little not up there, you know what I mean? Like I just, I've always smiled, I've always laughed, I've always, uh, I just look at things different, I guess. I don't know. I'm fucking crazy. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But it make it helps me stay, like, good. So I told him the story, you know? And he actually started laughing. He started cracking up. And he was like, well, that's, you know, that's following orders. And I was like, dude, you said don't stop. So I didn't stop. So I tried to piss in the bottle as we were driving. And shit didn't work out. It never, it never does for me. <laughs> so that's... That's what it is, got out his truth. And you know, um, he actually took a, re a really big liking to me just for how honest I was. And and if you meet anybody that 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 knows me from my past, you know, and and even today, you know, I'm, I'm brutally honest. And I know, I know that like, I'm not like the smartest guy in the room. I know that, you know, I, I was the dyslexic sick, dyslexic my whole life and you know the teachers were always trying to like put me in, in special classes and this and that and you know uh, one of my uncles at the time that was taking care of me got really really mad and he's like no fuck this you're you're not slow you're not you're not gonna be in the small bus and and he took me to the University of Illinois and they did a, a almost like a week study on me where they had me in this room and doing stuff like that because you know I, I was I was a weird kid I was kind of odd I was I, I mean I, I played with cardboard I 
I, I was I was a weird kid, you know, and I was always getting into shit. I was mischievous. And it actually came back that I was actually above average intelligent. And I really didn't start giving myself credit until like, you know, now that I, I started to change my life and I started to, to be better and believe in myself, you know, love myself most than anything. Do I still have like a lot of other issues? Yeah, I mean, you know, my anger issues I've been working on my whole life. Uh, uh, my jealousy comes and goes sometimes. I, it's something that I've learned to control. My PTSD, you guys watch my videos, you know, it's sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And I share all that. Like my everyday life, I share it on my other channel, Married to a Savage. And it's totally different to share that because now I'm sharing my, my, my wife, my family, you know, my kids, my home. I, I'm sharing a different part of me that is JC like now, you know, this stories that I tell here is JC from back then that it wasn't even really JC it was Julio because everybody knew me by Julio and Brazer that's what they called me on the streets and you know it, it's been it's been a, a, a crazy ride you know and I've, I've come to realize that hey I might not be the brightest crayon in the box but I'm still a crayon my name's JC I am wrong and strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. Be happy. Smile. Laugh. Make fun of yourself. And you'll enjoy life more every day. I dare you. Just be wrong and strong for one day. Catch you guys on the rebound.